Hi, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to another segment of JMT Media's Community Corner. Today is Monday, April 13th, y'all. And I have a very special guest with us. You know, one of the things that I've learned in business over the past five years and even being in PR marketing almost 20 years is um, always look to other resources and always network. And so I really wanted to reach out to another major visionary and leader um, with the Grand Central Partnership, um, the president and CEO, Mr. Fred Cerullo. Are you there? I am here, Jackie. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you so, so much for joining us. It's a little gloomy outside, but you have a ray of sunshine and information that you want to share with us. So I'm really excited that you're you're here this morning. Can you talk to the folks at home about what a bid is in general? Because I know on the North Shore of Staten Island, um, unfortunately, we don't have one, but SIEDC has done a significant job. Um, there's the New Door Business Improvement District and the Richmond Merchant Association. So just for the folks and viewers at home, can you talk about what a bid does? Sure, sure. So real quick, um, and first, I just want to thank you for having me on. And I hope you and, and all the viewers are, you know, experiencing good health in, in this time and sanity, because we know how difficult this period is for everyone. Um, you know, and that that doesn't escape any of us out in the community, for sure. Uh, a business improvement district is really the best example of a public private partnership. So it is the creature of of the government. It's a not-for-profit entity that is primarily funded by property owners and businesses within a geographic area. You mentioned, you know, New Dorp, for example, in, in Staten Island. Um, and then um, we perform services, supplemental services to what the city might already perform, but we also are there to support the businesses, the residents, and the visitors to our neighborhoods to help, help keep them vibrant. And I can't think of a better time than this one, um, as challenging as it is for organizations like uh, BIDS to be doing what they can to keep their neighborhoods alive. Absolutely. You know, um, you and I briefly spoke about the, the premise and the purpose for a community corner. And, you know, one of the things, the goals for today's segment is I really wanted business owners that are watching to hear and see and learn and absorb because I'm a sponge. I'm constantly learning. I'm always, I always tell people I'm a student of life, especially in business. Um, I wanted folks to learn about what's happening outside of Staten Island that we can learn in regards to businesses um, and then how we can bring that back here. So can you talk to us a little bit about, you know, how the businesses are doing in your neck of the woods, even though you're you're living here on Staten Island, which we're super happy, um, but it, around Grand Central Partnership, because um, you mentioned that you guys manage numerous, numerous um, businesses by providing resources. So can you talk a little bit about how the sentiment is and the feelings and what folks are doing over around Grand Central? Sure, I mean, obviously the, uh you know, the Grand Central District is, we like, we call it the World Central Business District, right? It's the home of more global headquarters. But what people don't realize is that it does have its residential population, but it also has the mom and pop shops and retail storefronts that we're familiar with here on Staten Island as well, close to 900 street level retail. And you know, this is a really painful time for business uh, and we're doing what we can. I think the most important thing that businesses can be doing um, right now is finding the ways that communication comes. So if you're in a bid neighborhood, that might be easier because there is one source of information that could have a very critical things like the programs available to business today funneled to them there's a place for business to go and ask questions. But if you are a business in a neighborhood without one, it becomes more complicated. And if your viewers are, are in that situation, they should just figure out how to tap into their elected officials um, because they're all doing their job, especially out here. We're blessed to have amazing elected officials who work 24 seven on Staten Island for this community who are providing information about how to get help, how to be safe and healthy, um, but how to keep their business, their dreams alive. Many of them, we know this is their life, their life dream. Some family businesses here 
and people want to survive. So, you know, what we're doing in Midtown is providing the foundation for businesses to hopefully be able to continue to stay alive in this very, very difficult and challenging time. Yeah, you know, we we talked about it. Our, our team is rolling out what we're calling the Staten Island Reboot Package. It's a, a 60 day kind of step by step guide. We're breaking it down in different industries. And so we'll be releasing that and distributing that through all of our electeds. And then, of course, um, all the different bids, including the Grand Central Partnership. Um, but how are, as of right now, are there any specific like programs or online learning that the businesses in your bid are adhering to? Yes. So, so the, you know, bids are, uh, they function under contract with this New York City Department of Small Business Services. And so the department has done a really good job in doing helpful webinars for a business community. Uh, the city council has done it, the controller has done it, and even our bid representatives that we hire as an association are doing it for the businesses. So what the bid, the role the bids are playing right now, in addition to just being a source of, of uh, conversation and communication, is that we are providing all of the information for people to access the programs that the federal government just came out with and the city and state have loans grants. Um, but you know, the problem is, and I think this is an issue for, for many businesses, is not all of these programs actually reach everybody or are practical for every type of business that exists. Yeah. And so we, we become a place where people come and say, Fred, I need help. I don't know what to do. Uh, the forms are sometimes complicated. We've had staff assisting in the filling out forms for businesses who, who need some help. Um, and I think the most important thing, and I, it's just a shout out to our field staff, you know, we have been deemed in some of our functions essential services as related to public health and safety. I have, you know, close to 100 members of my team who are still out seven days a week, sweeping the streets, dumping the garbage, removing graffiti, planting the plants and patrolling the streets. They're doing it obviously with social distancing rules in effect, gloves, masks, but they're out there trying to make those people who are in the neighborhood continue to feel safe and that they're part of a community. And I think that's what bids bring to a neighborhood as we know on Forest Avenue in New Dorp, West Shore and the South Shore. That's amazing that, you know, a lot of the bids, their their essential employees and their staff are still out there making sure that the neighborhoods are clean, that even though if you are a non-essential business, that your neighborhood is beautified and it's clean. And so when you're ready to get back to work, that it's ready to go. Um, yes. there, you know, Grand Central as a whole is this historic and iconic you see it in every photo and every movie, even when I growing up in Texas and I would see all these, um, you know, 1940s movies and big bands, like everything surrounds and happens at Grand Central. So um, are there like any businesses that are doing anything like major to partner with um, the neighborhoods or are there, you know, talk to us about some of the businesses that are there and what they're doing to connect with oh. the community. Sure, sure. Well, so a um, couple of things. First of all, we have such an amazing, supportive, generous business community. And in normal times, um, we have amazing support for events that we do, whether it's out in the street, music festivals. Um, you know, we have an annual food tasting event called Grand Gourmet, which pays tribute to our restaurants and our lounges, our nightlife base. Um, and they they line up to be a part of this because they know it's important for the neighborhood, the vibe of the community, the reputation, but also it helps them. It, it brings in new customers to them. Right now it's a little quiet. People right now are just holding on and trying to make it work. But what we're doing together is we have a, an opportunity. We are promoting those businesses that are open and operating that are keeping people employed um, through this time. So restaurants that are still doing takeout and delivery, just like we are doing here on Staten Island, we're a source of information for the surrounding community, the residents, people who are visiting New York, that believe it or not, as 
low as the numbers of tourism are right now for, for obvious reasons. We still have people coming to experience New York and they need to know where they can get food and what they can do or see. Um, and so we're doing that as a partnership with the business community. If you're open, you let us know and we will promote that through our social media circles, Facebook, our, our direct communications with um, our stakeholder base. That's fantastic. You know, I, I find it so fascinating that you have over 900 businesses that are within y'all's bid, the umbrella. Um, so I'm sure that there's a lot of phone calls. So I just find it absolutely fascinating that each of your staff members is able to reach out to everyone, communicate with everyone. Because I think, you know, even myself as a small business owner, we want to feel this sense of comfort, like that there's... Um, uh, a setup in place, there's leadership in place, there's protocols in place. And when there's not, that's when there's the panic as a small business owner. So I'm really glad to hear and see, you know, SIADC is doing a fantastic job, Chamber of Commerce, uh, Grand Central Partnership. Um, now, as we wrap up the segment, because we try to keep this very condensed and focused, are there any things that we need to look forward to or watch um, in the fall or in the winter for Grand Central Partnership because the um, uh, the Grand Central Gourmet, it's a hit every year. Um, we actually just uh, received a comment from Christine Garlisi. Good morning, Fred and Jacqueline. Love hearing this local perspective. Christine Garlisi, she's what I call my hashtag social sister. Um, she is the chief director, deputy director um, for the Nacotra Foundation. They do an amazing, amazing job um, giving back to small businesses and the yes, community. Sir. So they, they helped write the book on that for sure. They yeah, did their, with their <laughs> comments cafe. They do an amazing job. Um, so as we wrap up this segment, yeah. can you talk to us yeah. about what to look forward to in the future. So, so in addition to obviously getting all of our businesses, the retailers back up and running where they can feel that they're providing everything that they work so hard throughout the year to provide to, to the people in the, the neighborhood. I think the one thing we need to look forward to is really the restoration of our open public spaces. This has become a very important thing. And I think in this new chapter of our lives, the uh, significance of open public space for people to enjoy is going to become very critical. And we have some amazing new public space. Some of it just opened this past spring. So this will be the first full season of it on Pershing Square West. We have uh, shared streets. So we're gonna be looking at opportunities like other bids are around the city to find uh, spaces that we can make people feel safe and comfortable, be able to interact with each other at a distance, but to enjoy the clean, open air because I think that's gonna be very important for those who are coming back to work, back to Midtown or any neighborhood um, to begin to experience again. Outdoors, I think it's gonna become a comfort zone for people. Absolutely, you know, uh, last Friday we had Eileen Fuchs, the CEO of yeah. Snuck Harbor, um, talking about open space. Well, on the board of Snuck Harbor, yeah. as you know. It's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful space. And, um, you know, we've been hearing that actually a lot from whether it's small businesses, mid-sized developers, real estate agents, um, everything in regards to open space, which is, I think, um, one of the biggest assets here on Staten Island. So I'm looking forward to see how that unfolds. Um, but Fred, where Staten Island could be a leader. That's where Staten Island can really be a leader, and that's the the use of their public open spaces. In an, we could lead the rest of the city in showing how it can be done, and um, hopefully that will happen. And it'll happen in Midtown too, so it'll connect us from a uh, across from the net. No. That's right. Oh my gosh. It was so great chatting with you. Um, again, Fred Cirillo, president and CEO of the Grand Central Partnership, also uh, New York City Planning Commissioner. Thank you so much for joining us on the Monday afternoon. For those of you that are tuning in, thank you so much for joining us for Community Corner. Later this week, we have Scott Van Campen from Makerspace, along with Joe Ferrara, uh, principal at uh, BFC Partners and community advocate. So again, please be safe. It's a wonderful Monday. I know it seems a little gloomy outside, but that's okay, because that just means you have a lot more to do inside. So again, thank you so much, and y'all have a wonderful week. Thank you. Continued good health to everyone. Thank you.